everyone, and welcome to the Week 2 edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. We start in Houston, where the league-leading Dynamo defeated the Montreal Impact 1-0. It was the first meeting between the two teams since last year's heated playoff battle, and you know how that ended. Three red cards for Montreal. Well, the intensity apparently hasn't subsided. First, check out the 58th minute two-footed tackle by Felipe on Corey Ash. Studs were showing, and he was lucky to get away with just a yellow in my opinion, because that's endangering the safety of your opponent. Then, Hernan Bernardello gets in on things with a gratuitous kick on Oscar Bonia Garcia in the 77th minute. That's violent conduct to me, worthy of a red, but he only gets a yellow from referee Adyar Reyes. The impact had two gripes in this one, both happening at the start of the second half. First, Felipe was racing in on goal and it looks like Jermaine Taylor puts an arm on him to send him tumbling. I think Felipe had a strong case for a foul there and if it was called, it would have meant red card to Taylor for denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity. A few minutes later, it was Justin Knapp hitting the ground inside the box, but this one looks like a dive to me. Maybe even worthy of disciplinary committee action. Next, we head to Kansas City, where Sporting KC had a legitimate claim for a penalty kick in the 32nd minute. The ball is in the air and goalkeeper Chris Seitz gives a two-handed shove to Dom Dwyer. That's a PK in my eyes, but referee Abby Okolaja doesn't call it. Was there a case of retaliation five minutes later? You see here Dwyer once again going up for a header in the box, and this time he goes in with his studs showing, making contact with Seitz. I think Dwyer could have been sent off there for endangering the safety of his opponent. Let's talk penalty kicks. Dwyer's teammate Jacob Peterson wanted two of them. First, in the 52nd minute, Kellen Acosta's clearly pulling at his left arm with both hands, but Peterson doesn't go down and the foul isn't called. And then in the 83rd minute, the footage isn't crystal clear, but Javon Watson may have made contact with Peterson, who was in a great position for an attempted goal, but no foul was called by Okolaja. One more for Sporting Park. Late in the game, rookie Alex Martinez is fouled by Fabian Castillo. But look at what Jair Benitez does on the play. Kidney punch! Next to the New York Red Bulls Colorado match, we start in the 29th minute. Spanish center back Armando goes up for the header, but he also kicks out at Deshaun Brown and gets him in the midsection, or thereabouts. No foul was called here, but it's worth pointing out that Armando was also involved in a very similar play last week with another kick to the midsection on Darren Maddox. Armando did eventually get a yellow in the game against Colorado. Referee Alan Kelly gave it to him in the 85th minute for a reckless stray arm that struck Brown. But back in the 62nd minute, there was an identical play that left Dylan Powers bloodied. Armando was not disciplined for that one. Next, we look at the disputed penalty kick awarded to the Rapids in the 71st minute. The ball comes into the box to Marvin Chavez, and he gets bumped from behind by New York's Hamison Olave, who leans into him. That's a penalty kick, folks, and it was the equalizer for the Rapids. To the stop up center and the early red card dished out by referee Ramon Hernandez. It's only the 13th minute and Chivas USA's Agustin Pelletieri goes in with a tackle that clearly endangers the safety of his opponent. Look at how both feet leave the ground and he sinks his cleats into the leg of Vancouver's Pedro Morales. Tough call to make that early, but it's the right one by the referee. Only one other play to look at from this game. It's the 19th minute and Vancouver's Sebastian Fernandez is streaking into the box, chased by Eric Avila. It's impossible to tell from the angles available whether Avila trips him up as he went in to poke the ball. But the referee wasn't buying it and he let play continue. To the other Sunday matchup between Portland and Chicago. The Fire take the lead on a 19th minute penalty kick when Norberto Paparato bumps into Quincy Ameriqua who holds up his run and Paparato leans into him. Very similar to what happened in New York. Referee Marcos de Oliveira is left with no choice but to call the penalty kick and Jeff Lorenowitz converts. Moving to the second half and I think the Fire could have had another spot kick. See how Michael Harrington clearly raises his arms in an attempt to make himself bigger to deflect this cross and he succeeds. Should have been a PK for me. There was a red card at Providence Park shown to Chicago's Patrick Nyarko. He is already on a yellow card and in the 86th minute, he commits a foul here that stops a promising attack. By the book, that's a yellow card and Nyarko is out of the game. To PPL Park and the goal scored by the Philadelphia Union in the 31st minute and created by Leo Fernandez. But the question is, did Fernandez foul Andrew Farrell to start the play? Look, it's a risky decision by Farrell, and I think Fernandez simply positions himself perfectly to shield the ball. Farrell falls to the ground, but I don't think Fernandez is at fault. Referee Kevin Morrison does well to let play continue. But I disagree with Morrison on a big play in the 50th minute. Philly center back Austin Berry is already on a yellow card, and he clearly takes down Jerry Bankston on a breakaway, stopping a promising attack. And that's a yellow card, which would have resulted in a red for Berry. He clips Bankston's left leg right here. 
but the referee doesn't call a foul. To San Jose, where Chris Wondolowski opened his 2014 account with a goal in the sixth minute, but he was offside on the play. Victor Bernardes applies the flick on header, but at the moment the ball hits his head, Wondolowski is offside. In my opinion, the goal should not have stood. A ton of credit goes to the senior assistant referee on the opposite side of the field, Eugene Mednikov, who does well to keep his flag down on the Joao Plata goal that gives RSL a momentary 2-1 lead. Plata is in line with the defender on the pass. One more from Buckshaw. Rookie JJ Koval fouls Alvaro Saborio and is rightfully shown a yellow card by referee Jorge Luna Hernandez. But look at how Saborio also takes a swing at Koval. Although he misses, you wonder if the disciplinary committee will take a second look at that one. Lastly, we end in Seattle and an early incident in the sixth minute. The ball is practically out of play when Jackson just whacks Clint Dempsey. Now, remember there's history between these two players. Last year, they also were kicking at each other. No cards were issued back then, and the same happened on Saturday. I thought Jackson should have gotten a red card for violent conduct. But later in the game, Dempsey was guilty of something similar. Look at the kick he gives Alvaro Rey with the ball nowhere in sight. Another case of violent conduct, punishable in my opinion, by a red. But the ref lets him off the hook. That wasn't even the most talked about play involving Dempsey from this game. That happened in the first half and Toronto's Mark Bloom was on the wrong end of it. The TFC right back was floored by this hand to the midsection from Dempsey. Now, after the match, the Sounders captain says he was simply looking to get Bloom's arms off his back. I can buy that argument simply because Bloom does have his hands on Dempsey. And if Bloom accepted Dempsey's apology, so do I. Simple mistake. Bloom was fortunate not to have been sent off in this one for what happened in the 52nd minute. He's beaten by Lamar Nagel to this ball over the top, and Bloom hooks his arm under Nagel's to slow him down. And it works. To me, that's a penalty and a red card, but referee Ioannis Stavridis doesn't see it that way. That's all we have for this week. For our editor, John Betton, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.